Welcome to video number four. Today we are going to investigate a couple of number sequences in the Mandelbrot set. We have the Fibonacci sequence, the natural numbers, and all the rational numbers. You've probably seen the number file video on this topic, which is a great video if you haven't. But don't worry, I'm taking this video in a different direction. I'm going to try and give you some visual intuition as to why these sequences appear by looking at the underlying Julia sets. So let's begin. Remember back to video one, when we showed that each bulb has an associated period? Well, if not, here is a recap. If we let C equal any point in this bulb here, you'll see that the orbit converges on a sequence of three points. It becomes periodic. And we say that the orbit has a period of three. Every bulb attached to the main cardioid has an associated period. Notice that I can move C around within the bulb and the orbit still converges towards three points. Here is the period four bulb. Notice that wherever I start C within this bulb, the orbit settles down to four points. Here is the period five bulb. And here is the period six. I think you get the idea. The number sequences we are talking about here relate to how these bulbs are arranged. Now here is the fun thing. You don't need animations like this to work out what the period is. Each bulb has a big signpost attached to it. Look above the period three bulb and you will see that there is an antenna with three branches right on the top. That is, there are three branches, including the one that attaches to the bulb. This is our signpost. Above the period four bulb is a four branch antenna. And as expected, above the period five bulb is a five branch signpost. These signposts are attached to every bulb on the main cardioid. The bulbs on the period 2 circle are a little different. You need to multiply by 2 to get the period. But for the main cardioid, these signposts always work. So let's find our first sequence. Start with the biggest bulb, which is the period 2 circle. Now head in either direction, the next biggest bulb is the period 3 bulb. The next biggest is the period 4. And so on. We count by the natural numbers all the way to infinity deep inside the crack. For our next sequence, let's start with the period 3 bulb on top and go to the left towards the period 2 circle. The biggest bulb between 2 and 3 is 5. The biggest bulb between 3 and 5 is 8. The biggest bulb between the most recent bulbs, 5 and 8, is a period 13 bulb. Do you recognise the sequence? It is the Fibonacci sequence. The sequence that you make by always adding the previous two values. The Fibonacci sequence is one of those sequences that always seems to pop up in nature, and here it is in the Mandelbrot set. Pretty cool, eh? Well, actually, it's a bit of trickery. I think most YouTube presenters would leave you hanging here, but I'm going to try and explain why this happens, even if it kills the wow factor a little bit. Because I think the underlying mechanism here is actually more interesting. These two sequences naturally arise in the sequence of rational numbers, that is, counting by fractions. There are an infinite number of fractions between 0 and 1, and it turns out that the Mandelbrot set has a bulb for each one of those infinitely many fractions. Let's return to our signpost and see how we find these fractions. We are going to make a fraction m over n by reading our signpost. We already know how to find n just by counting the number of branches. To find m, 
we number each branch counterclockwise starting after the connecting branch. M is the shortest branch. We call M the rotational number. This is the period one on three bulb. It has three branches and number one is the shortest. This bulb is two on five. It has five branches and number two is the shortest. This bulb is the three on eight bulb. If you read the signposts, you will find every fraction around the main cardioid. Amazingly, you are counting by rational numbers, or fractions, from 0 to 1. You can start at the crack and count counterclockwise. Every fraction will be on the list, and every fraction will be bigger than the last. Of course, some of these bulbs will be tiny because the bulb's size somehow depends on the value of n. If n is big, the bulb will be small. Fractions like 2 on 6 don't exist as a bulb, because they correctly appear in the sequence as 1 on 3. Because the fractions with the smallest denominators have the biggest bulbs, we can see the Fibonacci sequence appear. The Fibonacci sequence just appears here as a result of the rational numbers. Stop and think for a minute how amazing it is to find such an important sequence in such a seemingly chaotic shape. All the fractions between 0 and 1. So there must be a reason why they're there. And there must be a reason why they are attached to the cardioid exactly where they are. We will try and answer both questions now. As I alluded to earlier, this is going to involve the corresponding Julia sets. So as an experiment, let's draw the orbit for a value of C inside the period 3 bulb. And we can move C around in a circular motion, so we get the feel of what is happening all over the bulb. Now I'm going to swap out the background image, leaving the spots exactly where they are. Instead, here is a Julia set corresponding to C. Remember that the Julia set changes shape if C changes, so the motion of C kind of makes the Julia set dance. Notice here that all the orbits remain inside the filled Julia set at all times. The Julia set has three-way branching. A period four bulb now. Remember when we make the Mandelbrot orbits, we always start at z equals zero. So we are looking at the Julia set and seeing the orbit of the centermost pixel. I haven't rendered a spot at zero because it clogs up the images. With period five, five-way branching. The Julia set is changing shape as C moves, but it always has five branches available for the orbit to land on. The period 6 bulb now. Remember that C is the same over the whole Julia set. This means that the orbit must land on part of the filled Julia set to always remain periodic, otherwise it would escape. So to be part of the Mandelbrot set, the orbit must find a repeating path over the filled Julia set. Bouncing from branch to branch, it must hit its target on the filled Julia set each iteration. An equilibrium develops. The Mandelbrot bulb is the area where this equilibrium exists. Go just outside the bulb and you'll hop too far, breaking the periodic motion. You'll notice as the period gets higher, the branches get thinner. So the landing site is smaller, so it's harder to maintain an equilibrium at higher periods. So the corresponding bulbs in the Mandelbrot set are smaller. Now, our rotational number m, that we found signposted as the shortest branch, 
corresponds to how big the rotation is each iteration, i.e. it is how many branches the spot hops each move. Periods in the 1 on 7 bulb jump one branch, Periods in the 2 on 7 bulb jump 2 branches. Periods in the 3 on 7 bulb jump 3 branches each iteration. That's why we call M the rotational number. For a spot to return to its starting branch, the angle must be rational. Think of it this way. If you're going around a circle in fractional size steps, say one seventh size steps, it takes seven steps to return to the starting point. Make the step size two sevenths and it still takes seven steps, but you need to go around the circle twice. You get back to the start after n number of steps, where n is the denominator of the fraction. If the size of your step is not a rational number, you never get back to where you started because you can't represent it as a fraction. So this should give you some visual intuition as to why the bulbs appear as rational number sequences. Only the rational numbers can find a periodic equilibrium bouncing around the Julia set. Hence, only rational numbers form bulbs. It also gives you a bit of a clue as to why the bulbs are different sizes. So the next question we can ask is exactly where are these bulbs attached? The period 1 area of the Mandelbrot set is known to be a perfect cardioid. The period 2 area is known to be a perfect circle, but other than that, there are no known perfect shapes. The bulbs are not circles, they are distorted. We can create a cardioid by rolling one circle around another. turns out that each bulb is attached to the cardioid at an angle corresponding to the internal circle. For example, the one-third bulb is located where the outer circle is exactly one-third of the way around the inner circle, a measurement known as the internal angle. The other bulbs are all positioned at their corresponding angles. You may be interested into why these signposts exist. Going back to the period 3 bulb again, remember that the signpost has three way branching. Beyond the main bulb, there is another bulb. This sub bulb has a period of 6. If you have a look at the Julia set, you can see that the orbits are bunched into three groups of two. The Julia set still has three branches. There just seems to be a period 2 behaviour within the period 3 behaviour, giving an overall period of 6. I like to think of this as some kind of multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6. Head out one sub bulb further, and you find that the period doubles to 12. 3 times 2 times 2 is 12 and the orbit's attractive fixed points also group into this pattern, 3 by 2 by 2. The Julia set still has three branches, so that is why the signpost above the bulb also has three branches. The three branching pattern remains beyond the original bulb. There is one other curiosity that I'd like to show you. If you remember back to the previous video where we built a Julia set, I can make a similar animation for the Mandelbrot set. It can't be explained so simply in terms of complex transformations, but it does produce an interesting visual. If I use a polar grid instead of a coloured circle, and then perform the transformations, you'll see that after many iterations, the picture inside the cardioid settles down.
These angles also correspond to the location of each bulb. For example, the period 3 bulb is at 120 degrees and 240 degrees, exactly one third of the way around the polar grid. Within this animation you can also see the periodic motion within the other bulbs. That's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. It should give you a further clue that many of the mysteries of the Mandelbrot set may be revealed by analysing the corresponding Julia sets. After all, the Mandelbrot set is just a map of all the Julia sets. I've uploaded some extra graphics to this channel, showing the orbital behaviour of both the Julia sets and the Mandelbrot set. These extra videos are without commentary, but they will allow you to better visualise some phenomena and investigate these patterns more for yourself.